opening bell uh, in Central Market is the first track, and it's a little less dense than a lot of the other pieces, so um, parts pop out a little more, and so the, um, there's, there's less fighting going on, the, the orchestration isn't as elaborate. It's a nice entrance into a record uh, as, as dense as Central Market, and it felt like the right uh, opening statement. The vibrance of it sets the tone. Um, it's, it is a repeated phrase um, to kind of tie in my interest in repetition, so I kind of showcase that right off the bat. Hopefully it um, disarms you as, as a listener, um, depending on what you expected this record to be. Ufa's Woodshop is the second track, and that's the last piece I actually um, wrote for this record, The Duck and the Butcher, which is probably the most subdued piece on the record. That is just like a, it's a very simple, almost childlike march kind of feeling to it. And I wanted to have a piece that was very simple as far as the, the instrumentation as well. And that's the simplest one. The first two tracks, I could say, I was very much more interested in the blending of different instruments and, and the kind of effects that you can create through these blends. Um, and. Uh, the orchestration of those pieces was really exciting to me. Duck and the Butcher is a really um, was a great uh, way for me to kind of get away from that and try to, uh, try a different thing of just honing in on a particular instrument and seeing how that instrument can interplay with um, very minimal ideas happening behind it. Um, and it also was a great a good opportunity just to be able to play a line because a lot of the fragments and the phrases of these pieces are very short and very condensed. So there's not a very um, elongated kind of melodic line um, that I used. So that was the one piece that I was, I kind of like let my hair down and just let it, let it dance a little bit. Platinum Rose is the, kind of the centerpiece to the record that I had been focusing on. Um, I had been listening to a lot of, um, I've been working on this last record with my band Battles, um, our record mirrored. And I started through that, started to really get obsessed of um, large pieces, large scale pieces, and I um, started to kind of go back to um, listening to large orchestra pieces, and I suddenly found myself in a loop, no pun intended, um, listening to Stravinsky's piece called Song of the Nightingale, and it's the first piece he did after the Rite of Spring. It's a rearrangement of one of his operas called The Nightingale, and um, it's such a condensed, perfect piece of, uh, uh, it's, such, it's such a great small condensed um, representation of what he had been doing with his three ballets. And I really love that piece. And I, I really learned from his timing um, in that. Uh, I didn't actually take any parts, um, or I didn't actually quote him or anything, but I appreciated his understanding of development and um, <clears throat> the, the decisions that he made. And I tried to um, incorporate some of that sensibility into the piece, into Platinum Rose. Unfurling is the first breather of the record in a way. You've, you have all these colors going, uh, uh, you know, it's just like rich milk chocolate in your mouth for 30 minutes and you're, you know, you just want to have a sandwich for the first time. And it, finally, it just kind of lets you breathe for a second. I, I uh, really love uh, um, Brian Eno and a lot of the things that he introduced. And I also really love B-horror movies and um, really kind of funny kind of 70s horror movie music. I wanted to do my own v version of that. And uh, it starts with that um, slow descending chord progression. Um, not unlike the um, chord progression that Bernard Herrmann uses in Psycho right as the film starts. And um, so I kind of wanted to reference that in a funny way. Out of the darkness comes the first song on the record, um, one track before the end. So finally there's a, you know, there's, this, in a way it's a resolve in itself, J City. Um, it's an older piece, and it's more reliant on um, loop-based repetition that I had used in earlier compositions, because it's kind of from that era when I wrote it, and I wanted to incorporate that into Central Market. Um, so that has a 
it's it's upbeat, but it's not as jovial, and it's not as um, it, it's not as um, manic and happy in a way as the beginning is, but it's still upbeat. Your hopes are dashed with the last piece called Dead Strings. It's a parody of itself in a way, um, in its creepiness. You have the um, you have the water phone. You have these strings. Oh, and actually, one thing I'll say about Dead Strings, the uh, the I, I really wanted to have a kind of Bartokian uh, string quartet kind of feeling um, uh, in in and also kind of a Toro Taki Mitsu large orchestra pieces of, of his. This really kind of really beautiful but haunting kind of lines, um, but. Right before the first uh, big drum break in the piece, I quoted this Elmer Bernstein uh, piece um, that he wrote for Ghostbusters, the movie. And I love Ghostbusters, always love Ghostbusters. So I grabbed this one line from Ghostbusters right before uh, the drum break that Elmer Bernstein did. Thanks, Elmer. <laughs> <laughs> 